<laughs> you see, I get worried when a chef walks into the studio. Chef Martin Kobold, Chef MLK, welcome to the Legend Studio. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Nice to have you with us. It's always nice being here. Let's get through all the usual uh, shitty stuff that everyone <laughs> does, okay? Okay, yeah. Um, when, you, when you were a little kid running around in Austria playing soccer... Where did you grow up in Austria? I never played soccer. Oh, you never played soccer? <laughs> body like this doesn't play soccer. <laughs> oh, sorry. That body is made for modeling and... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's Pretty a, boy. It's a <laughs> <laughs> when, when you were at school, did, yeah. you, did you want to become a chef? How, how did you get into this industry? No, uh, I actually always wanted to become a pilot, funny enough. And, you know, I really? grew up in Austria and my home language is German, of course. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I decided to become a chef because I just didn't see myself learning any English. And my English teacher in school said, you're absolutely useless <laughs> in English. So, but you know, then in 88, I came to South Africa and then I had to learn English. Mm. And um, yeah, and here I am. That's it. Okay, let's just go back a bit on, on the, 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 the distinguished career of Martin Cobalt. And I know you are not the sort of person to talk about yourself, but mm. the, you, you have achieved a huge amount in this country. Your adopted country now. Yeah. Um, and a huge amount internationally as well. I mean, um, people who don't know Martin, Martin came out to South Africa uh, in those days with uh, Southern Sun. That's correct, yeah. Uh, started as a chef in Pretoria. That's correct. And then got uh, a huge, um, uh, uh, was, was, was uplifted within the Southern Sun group and got a huge appointment at <laughs> the, it was the, the hotel. The at Joburg Sun. Joburg Sun? No, but didn't you first no, go one? to the airport? No, Airport Sun, that's correct. That was my first executive chef position, Airport Sun. No the runway one. bar at the Airport Sun. No, that's the other one, Jeremy. That was the Jans Mats holiday in those days, which is now Southern Sun Hotel. The yeah. one across the road, you know, the Airport Sun. Oh, right. Which is now Garden Court. That was my first. I, I worked with Jeff Skudermans at the Jans Mats holiday Inn, and the runway bar, that was our hangout every <laughs> night after, after duty. Yeah. I mean, in the 80s, that was mm. the, run, the runway bar was a hangout for everybody exactly. in Joburg. And we had the Bavaria upstairs. I'm not sure if you remember that one. I don't. I think it was probably mm. closed by the time I moved up to Joburg, which was yeah. late. No, late 80s, baby. But we didn't venture out to the East Rand because if you <laughs> went to the East Rand, you got Blixen. Yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. nothing's changed. Yeah, no, nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed. <laughs> Martin then went on, uh, started his own business, opened his own restaurant, yeah. um, and then be uh, became the president of the South African Chefs Association. That's correct, yeah. You are probably, and I, you, you need to correct me if I'm wrong here, but you probably, on an annual basis, judge more competitions around the world yep. than any other single chef in South Africa. Um, I think without blowing my own trumpet, yes, I think you're yes. correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, last, last year, just in, in 2014, I, I traveled 19 times overseas to judge in international competitions all over the world. And these are international competitions, guys and girls who are listening wherever you are in the country. These are international competitions that are constituted with top chefs around the world mm. who are putting creations together, mm. uh, and they call on people like Chef MLK, Martin Cobalt, to uh, judge those competitions. All I'm trying to do here is so that people understand who we're talking to, and people understand why I am standing up in the Legend <laughs> Studio, because I'm talking to a legend in the culinary industry right now, not only in our country, but worldwide as well. Chef Martin Cobalt is our guest in the Legend Studio on the Jeremy Mansfield Show. It's the Jeremy Mansfield Show, your favorite radio station, and uh, Chef MLK, Chef Martin Cobalt, uh, our guest in the studio today. Um, Marty, you're, you've been involved in a load of things, apart mm. from I mean, we'll get on to a bit later. We'll get on to your, your uh, chef school that you've started, yeah. uh, which has been, which is up and running in Johannesburg now. And in is George, in KZN. George, KZN, KZN. And, and now in Namibia as well. Well, Namibia, we're in the process of opening, yeah. Okay. So there are already four franchises that are running yeah. uh, under the Chef MLK banner. Um, but um, – one, one of the other things that you're involved with is this global pizza challenge. How the <laughs> hell did that come about? Well, again, 
body like this loves pizza. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Now, well, it came about a couple of years ago with our visits in, in Australia, judging a couple of competitions over there, and we met uh, the, the, those days, the president of the Australian Chef Association, or Culinary Federation, as it's called, and um, he, had a, he, was, he was the consultant for a company uh, called Fonterra. And they had a complete overrun of mozzarella cheese. So they asked him to come up with some sort of concept to try to get rid of that mozzarella cheese in Australia. Mm -hmm. And he came up with that pizza challenge. And it really, like, within a couple of months, they, they sold their overproduction of mozzarella cheese. And, and it became dormant. It laid dormant for a couple of years. And we just started talking about it. And he said, you know, why don't we create a global pizza challenge? You know, have it globally run. So him and his partner, they looked after the whole Pacific Rim. And, and Arnold Tensa, my partner in South Africa, we, we basically started running Africa and, and Middle East. And we just created a couple of competitions throughout the, our areas. And it's now seven years running. And it's going from strength to strength. But th th that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is that chefs are no longer people who are just in the kitchen. Mm. They are entrepreneurs, they're business people, they, yep. they, create, they, they create a whole lot of things. Let, let's just go through a few of the things that you're involved with. I mean, mm. um, we'll get on to your, your, your Clover uh, television show. In, in just a moment, yep. but outside your your media appearances, we've already established that you 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 judge internationally, uh, all over the world. Yeah. Um, but you also do endorsements for a whole load of products and companies and yep. all that sort of stuff. Exactly. Let's yeah. just go into that because I think that gives people a sense of where chefs are possibly going. Yeah. Well, you're hundred percent right. But I I, I think one. One thing I need to put forward straight away before we go into all this uh, a scenario of different categories where chefs could go. Mm. I think I'm very privileged, and I think privileged purely because of my involvement with the South African Chef Association from right at the beginning when I came to this country. That gave me sort of the... Uh, opened my eyes in what's actually happening in South Africa and what's happening globally in the, in, in the chefing industry. Um, so but still about, I would say, at least 90%, if not more, of chefs are still chefs, what we know under chefs, being in the kitchen, standing mm -hmm. behind the stoves for the 12, 14, 18 hours or whatever every single day. I think I'm just very fortunate and very blessed in what I've been doing. I had my own restaurant many years ago, um, about 11 years ago or whatever, and at the time of my life, and uh, but if somebody comes to me today and says he wants to become a chef and his dream is to open a restaurant, the first thing I say... Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't. Because it is hard work. It is really, really hard work. In today's environment, have a, having a restaurant, it's just not an easy thing to do. You know, it's a lot of money involved. And the, the sad thing is that the normal basic training of a chef doesn't include business skills. Business exactly. skills. And that's where most of the chefs are failing because they just think whatever they've been doing and trained for to chef, to cook, to prepare meals for their customers – it's not the same thing as running a business. Mm. So I've learned a hell of a lot in having my restaurant for like over eight years and my whole business over eight years, and I failed big time. I mean, I saw my bum many times. But oh, you that's, know, not a, that's not a pretty sight to, to think no, of. No, I know. No. Okay, sorry, let's, get, uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on. Okay, but that's so what it is. You learn out yeah. of mistakes. Like, you know, that, that's part of growing up anyway. Yeah. And uh, I've been very fortunate being involved in Chef Association, having tried my own restaurant, having tried my own business and failed and having the learnings out of that and now having a company which is so open i mean like chefing hospitality industry it's just so wide open and uh, now going back and what i'm all involved in yes i'm doing endorsements for various companies product endorsements i do product developments i do recipe developments for companies uh, I, I do cookbooks for companies um unfortunately not my own yet but that's something in the, in the, in the near future um i do tv shows uh, i've I do emceeing. Uh, you know, there's so many different facets of, of, of that industry which I love being involved in because I'm in the situation where I'm not um, where I'm not um, cooking much anymore on a day-to-day -day basis. My you're, business is just so much more open. Consulting. I'm advising and consulting. And, and, and for me, this is so nice because I don't have to go into the kitchen at 6 o'clock in the morning, stay in the kitchen the whole the whole yeah, day, yeah, and and yeah. I can I can. You nearly said the whole. I nearly said yeah, the, the the whole. You, yeah, because it I is a whole. 
day. Exactly. It's a yeah. whole day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But now I wake up in the morning. I really love going to work. You know, I hate weekends. I hate weekends. I hate long weekends. I hate public holidays because this is, means that all my staff sitting at home and not doing nothing. And I'm also forced <laughs> to sit at home and doing nothing because nobody else is working. I, I just love my work. I love my job. And being creative. And I think that's what it's all about. And every day is different. That, what, what you said earlier, raises an entire aspect of this whole thing of being a chef. Because you are by nature, and I, I've known fortunately, and you raised the South African Chefs Association, and I'm very fortunate in that I've had some dealings with them. And through them, through the association, I've met a whole load of chefs. Mm. They are incredibly creative mm. Um, innovative yeah hmm. egotistical <laughs> they, you know what Martin <laughs> they're actually like radio personalities yeah. they really are hmm. there is a there's a there's a singular similarity between a chef and a radio personality hmm. they all want to make a, a stamp on their area and their contribution, mm. whether it's a signature dish that becomes absolutely famous or whether it's a method of cooking or so, trying something new, you guys are creatives in your area. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's this good old saying, you know, or the good question, you know, is a chef an artist or is it a science, you know, a scientist? You know, I think it's a bit of both. Mm. And that's really what it's all about. Now, you have managed to reinvent yourself. Um, from being a chef, and I'm not saying that that's uh, something that is a stepping stone to anything else, because lots of people have been very good chefs and they've made a career of just being chefs. Mm. But you have stepped into other roles. You've, you've moved into, um, a, as you said, consultancy, into endorsements, into, into, into television. Tell, it, mm. tell us about the, the, uh, the show that, that's currently on in, in South Africa. Yeah, it's Global Little Big Cook-Off. I'm very excited about that one. I mean, um, I, I was very fortunate of being involved in season one, which was aired last year, 13 episodes. Yeah. And now it's just recently we, we, we shot season two. Mm -hmm. And um, just last Sunday was uh, episode three uh, um, broadcast on SAPC3. It's every Sunday, it's 13 episodes again on season two. Um, it's such an exciting show because that, that really... It's, it, it's part of my passion, what I have in training people and training specifically small little children and, and, and training them on a life skill because cooking is a life skill. And sometimes people don't think cooking is fun. I believe cooking is really fun. And for me to be able to, to, to pass on my knowledge and to pass on my, my, my creativity, my innovation, whatever, whatever, whatever the big words are. The experience. The experience you yeah. know, in, in cooking and making cooking fun. This is what it's all about. And this cooking show, The Clover Little Big Cook-Off, it's just, I think, one way of showing the general public out there that cooking can be fun. And, and, and cooking is not just fun, but it's also a family affair at home. You know, it's like in this cooking show, what it's all about is a big cook and little cook. So it's the mother and daughter, father and son, or aunt and auntie, or aunt and niece, or whatever. You know, it's, and, and it's so exciting to see the teamwork and to see the family affair which they bring into the studio in, in front of the cameras. And it's just so much fun. Now, now hang on. You've, you've said that and you've spoken about who, who it involves and, and how, how it's uh, constructed and all the rest of it. Um, it, 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 it is on SABC3. That's correct. Um, 16.30 every Sunday. 16.30 every Sunday. People, when, I, I would put it to you, and you don't, ha you don't need to answer this question. Yeah. But... No, no, actually, I'll answer it myself. <laughs> if people think about cooking in South Africa, they yeah. go, if I say to them, a cooking show, the chances are they would go, uh, Master Chef South mm. Africa. Master Chef South Africa probably has, I would hazard a guess, around about a viewership of about 300,000, if that. It's just below 100,000. Just below a hundred thousand. Okay, yeah. so I was I, I tripled the amount. That's very good of you. So yeah, <laughs> so something the you, you, your clever little big cook off on yeah. SABC three. What is the viewership of that? Well, on, on, on season one, we had an average viewership of over nine hundred thousand viewers. So that's only a, that's only a million people. Yeah, watching yeah. it. You see, that's the difference. Yeah, uh, is you don't always have to go under a brand. You can go through a certain 
a, a lineage. You, you can appeal to a certain audience. Yeah, that's and, very and exciting. And hats off to you. Sorry, chefs, hats off to you <laughs> and you. to the rest of the team on, mm. on the Clover Little Week cook-off. I mean, that is a, that is a phenomenal achievement. And yeah. as you say, it's getting in at a grassroots level to people yeah. who will grow up with cooking. Absolutely. And we also won, we also won the best... Um, um, at SEFTA last year, you know, the South African... From the Television uh, Awards? From yeah. the Television Awards. We won the category of Best uh, uh, Game Show uh, with that show last year, which is fantastic. And it, it was great an achievement. It was really great. So that suddenly cooking becomes a game. Is cooking a game to you? Yes, it is. Yes, it yeah. is. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, and, and, you know, when my kids still were small at home or whatever, we had that sort of games in the kitchens at home where we created like little mystery baskets and, and you know, and everybody had to do something, you know, and it, it is a game. It's, it, it, it's, it's fun. It's a family thing. I want to get onto that in just a moment. Chef Martin Cobalt is in the Legends studio today uh, from Chef MLK. We've spoken about the cooking school, the Chef MLK cooking school. Uh, we'll get to back to that in just a moment. Uh, by the way, is there, is there a, a website address that uh, people can uh, find out more about you, your products, your, your, your stuff you do and all the rest Absolutely. of it? Absolutely. I mean, if, uh, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed about the, about the, about the website currently because it's, it's under construction. You know, it's, it's out there, but it's You're not You're a really chef. You can't uh, construct no, everything. Can't You're anything. not an IT specialist. No, that's why I'm waiting for my IT specialist to sort <laughs> it out. But uh, it's a little bit outdated. But, you know, I'm, obviously I'm on Twitter and, and uh, Chef MLK. I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram and, and, of course, on Facebook. Facebook is my big, big sort of media, social media media uh, platform yeah so everybody can find me there i'm a chef mlk so um, chef yeah. mlk on facebook is the That's best place to yeah i mean yeah. if you walk into any top restaurant in the world mm. and you mention bill gallagher's name if but, the chef is anyone who claims to be who he is yeah. he would know who you're talking but about let, if I may, let me tell you a little story about yes. Billy. For the yeah. first time I traveled with him overseas, and that's many, many years ago. And that was already, you know, uh, Bill Gallagher is, is, is quadriplegic, is in a wheelchair. And I traveled with him to, to Orlando in America uh, to go to an ACF, to an American Culinary Federation Congress. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it was the first time ever traveling overseas to one of those things. And I'm sort of his assistant. I'm pulling his wheelchair and everything. Yeah. And we get into the cocktail party that evening. And there's about 700 chefs specifically from America, but also parts and parcel from, from, from other, other parts of the world. And I'm moving in him there, and, and he goes like with his cheeks, me with his elbow a little bit back. I said, who is this guy? I, said, I don't know. I've, I've never seen those guys. I don't know. I remember, I remember, I remember. You know, and he walks up, oh, how's it, George, or whatever his name was. And for me, that was such a great eye-opener because he knew about 80% of those chefs. He knew by name, Good and they all knew him. It was just, just, just mind-blowing. So that's just a little bit of a perspective of how well-known Dr. Bill Gallagher, Gallagher is all around the world. Yeah. You know, it's it's just amazing, really yeah. amazing. And he recently came out with uh, with a book. Yeah, the letters and the ladies pressed, which is basically yeah. the, you know the letters and the ladies pressed. The letters and the ladies pressed. Uh, Bill Gallagher would come out with a cookbook with a title like that. Exactly, but it's got a history about it. I don't yeah. know the exact story, but you know, I've brought you a book here, which uh, we can give away to the listeners. Or Absolutely. Whatever. And um, and there's this whole life story, the last 50 years of Dr. Bill Gallagher in the culinary industry, and uh, uh, it's it's such a great read. You know, it's 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 the life of a of a of a great chef for the last 50 years, and it's such such an inspiring book. I mean, I read it, I think, twice already, and and it's just fantastic. The book is the, la the Lettuce and the Lady's Breast. It is by Billy Gallagher. If you'd like to win that, then uh, SMS us on 41802. Start your SMS with the letters JM, and all you have to do to win that is uh, put into the space, the title space, Dr. Bill. That's it. Dr. Bill will take one of those SMSs and uh, will forward you. Uh, the uh, Lettuce and the Lady's Breast, the book by Dr. Bill Gallagher. Martin Cobalt, thank you very much for joining us on The Legends Show. Thank you very much.